Hi guys, my name is Ademola Badmos and welcome back to my YouTube channel. We are talking about um, how to write um, BDD scripts using Cypress. And uh, in the previous videos, we've talked about the installation and configuration of the BDD structure on your VS Code. And um, I also talked about the extension that you might want to use. So let's get into the nitty gritty. In the very first video, I did say that this is our test uh, URL. And um, I will just be walking through some things that I've discussed in the previous videos about Cypress. So please bear with me if I do not um, have to explain myself. Please, you can watch my previous videos on introduction to Cypress. So you can have um, a feel of it and uh, understand it. I highly recommend, I highly recommend that you watch those videos first before you jump into the BDD part of things. Like I said, BDD creates a more, creates a more inclusive way of um, writing your scripts. So <clears throat> like, um, I like to write shorter codes and all. So we'll see how that works here. So we'll begin to put in some configurations that uh, we have um, done in the past. View port height. Um, we we'll set that to probably 900 or 800. Let me just leave it at nine. So I'm setting the viewport height and the viewport width because I uh, want to have a bigger resolution when I'm running the code. Uh, when I want to run the code, I hope I remember, I would first remove this two features, then we'll see how that works. So I would also change the default command timeout. Um, default command timeout. It's set to four seconds, but um, I would like to extend it to um, 10 seconds. So that would be 10,000 milliseconds. So just to give myself more time because um, I noticed some lag in my internet earlier. So to just give my system to be able to um, get all of this done. You know. That's too much. Yes, this is the required amount. So with this, I think we are good to go on the Cypress.json file. So let us create the first file that we need, a feature file. So let's call this, since it's a um, standard, I did say that we are going to do different ones. So we'll do standard, let's just call it standard.feature for a standard user login. So the first thing you do here is you write out everything you want to test. You write it in plain English language so that such that anybody that sees it will understand. All right. So let's get it on. The first thing you write is feature. And what does feature do? As you can see, you're going to talk about the feature that you want to test. So, so we can say testing testing login for a standard user all right you are at liberty to put more description that maybe to make on this, to let us understand a standard user a standard user should have a glitch free login experience you know just to further explain what this test is all about so we do that and the next thing we do is we start to create our scenario so we give the scenario a name as well and this scenario essentially says what test case we are doing a standard user should be able to log in, right? Login to source to swag labs to swag labs, right? Now that's the ti that's the title of our scenario. So this can be likened to what you do in your Excel sheets when you are writing your test cases. You have a test case for login. You have the test description and you have the test steps. So your scenario now 
Your scenario 30 is like a test description. You're describing what you're doing in the test. And the next thing is you begin to do your tests. So the first thing you will do in your test is you write the word given. Given is like an initiator. Just compare it to when you're writing in your te in your Excel sheet. If you're writing in your Excel sheet, what you will first write is your first in your, your first step is to launch the site, you know, something close to that. So we can say given I launch the swag lab site, right? So then our next step would be, if we've launched the site, our next step would be when. Or we can also extend the given. The basic steps are given when and uh, then. But if we begin to write, given I launch Swag Labs, given I do this, given i do that it's no longer readable it becomes a bit uh, it's no longer fluid it becomes a bit mechanical so we have some um, adjoining um mnemonics like and or even but but we will not uh, be using but in any uh, in any situation at this point of this because it's just an introductory um video so we can say given I launch the swag labs and I insert the standard user name and I insert the standard no the password is actually generic and I insert the password right so my final action i might say and i click the login button but the thing is this we can introduce when when i click the login button the login button now when is usually to is usually used to denote a cause like when you do an action that you are expecting an effect for, you use when. Given, you use it to initiate the whole start, the whole step process. So when you use when, you are expecting a, an effect. So you can have a series of causes. Like, okay, when I click the login, okay, let's say the login process requires an OTP. Right? And after using the OTP, it also requires... Um, checking box to see that you are not a robot let's just say that is, a, that is just for example sake it is not possible to be doing capture all right okay let's say after putting the otp you have to check a box to say you agree to the terms and conditions so those two things are important and also clicking the login button so you have three courses so you can say when i click the login button and i insert the otp and i click and i check the terms and condition then i should be logged in successfully right which makes sense so but in this case we only have one course it's just to click the login button and after clicking the login button we would expect to see ourselves in the site right then i should see the um the marketplace let's just call it that all right, for lack of words. So with this, we have written a step, but yet implement, not yet implemented. This is one of the advantages that BDD brings in. You can begin to write all your steps as your test, as um, the, uh, the old development plan starts. You can begin to write your tests, write all your steps down. The, even if you don't have an environment to start, uh, to start testing in, you can write all these steps down because in your head, you're making all your test cases. You're creating all your test cases. 
So it doesn't essentially have to be the correct ones. You might just need to make some modifications. Some might even be out of scope that you might have to remove, but just creating down those steps that can even help the developers to, uh, as a form of guide. So you can create all these steps before you even get the actual test. So now that we've done all these tests, we can go into the site and try to do it manually. We see the standard user, we're on the site, we've launched it, we put the standard user, well, it's already there, and we put the password. Then when we click the login, we're on the marketplace. Oh, we're on the products page. So let's change that to products page. So you see now that we need to change something in our code. So as you see the, as you see the products page, all right? So this is what our test will be. So we'll stop here and in the next class, we will now look into defining our steps because right now our codes would not run because there is no step definition for it. So we will try to run the code first in the next video before we write the step definitions for it. Thank you for watching. Once again, please do not forget to press the like button and subscribe to my channel if you find this helpful. Bye-bye.